Good evening and good morning everyone from all over the world. So welcome to my The Coaching Talk Show. And today in this talk show, one of the another special guest with us. And uh, me and entire Lives Honor family, welcome to all of you, all my users all my uh, and my guest also. So Zendri is one of my guests today. So she is here. Let me take her in video. we are going to discuss about how you can you know overcome from stress so she is just going to join so here we go here's andre good evening hi ashin how are you i'm good thank you so much how are you doing i'm doing well thank you <laughs> welcome hi. to the coaching talk show and welcome to the lives honor family platform and today i'm very sure you are going to share so many secrets with our uh, viewers with our followers so that they can get more opportunity to learn from your expertise and transformation is very important and i really appreciate your effort towards to the society towards to the humanity right is really really appreciated and we as a coach obviously try to help people as much as we can and your availability is really appreciated and you are doing fantastic job so uh, before going to the session i request you to please uh, share a brief intro with our audience so that our audience india audience as well as us audience as well as rest of countries audience can be aware from your profile yes sir thank you for the lovely introduction already <laughs> it's lovely to be here Um my name is Zandri Zandri Bailafal and I'm originally from South Africa currently living in Vietnam Hanoi I'm an occupational therapist and transformational coach uh currently yeah uh here in Hanoi uh, my my story basically started of uh me visiting and then not seeing any attempts to inclusivity um with regard to people that have disabilities i didn't even see people in wheelchairs uh environments were adapted for people with wheelchairs so i found that very interesting and then i did a little bit of research about ot in vietnam and that time it was what almost 4 years ago um so then i decided okay i'll i'll come over um and try and find out a little bit more about occupational therapy and how yeah how i can make a difference here so at that time ot didn't exist and it wasn't even uh presented at the universities to the students to study so when i came over i was very much a pioneer for it um didn't know of any occupational therapists in the area and still currently um the only occupational therapist in annoy so it's it's wonderful to see and to be part of a a journey um to see how views and perceptions have been changed in a country with regards to how they view people with disabilities um from a very mild extent to a very severe extent and how they are trying now to do like these different associations and these different uh, companies and different ways that they want to include these people and also um yeah just accept them into the environment which is lovely that's great that's great and it's uh, it's the really fantastic because i i totally understand and uh, as i am aware that, you know you are doing very very fantastic and outstanding job in in your domain and if you are, if i am talking about you know occupational occupational therapist is not a easy job right it's it's a very big responsibility and how you are dealing it's it's uh, really outstanding really appreciated generally <laughs> thank you for your lovely words arjun Yeah, it definitely has its challenges, but it's it's very rewarding, and it's very very, yeah. It's there's just a bigger dream and a bigger purpose. So it, it's what drives me every day. Absolutely, and that that is the that is the what I can uh, feel. That is the one of the secret behind of your happiness, behind of your joy. You enjoy your everyday work. I really do. I find it means it means pleasure from. working with the people that i work with and and just having the opportunity to change a life 
and might not change a big part of it, but at least what I can do is I can make life a little bit easier for them by giving them the skills, giving them hope and developing independence within them, themselves so that they can make the world their oyster. Wow, fantastic. So Zendri, uh, <clears throat> because the, uh, my, my, the, this uh, talk show is uh, <laughs> uh, uh, basically I, I always, uh, me and entire Lives Honor family always try to explore people and real content, real influencer, so that rest of people can learn and understand challenge, how they can, you know, overcome from challenges, overcome from fear, overcome from anxiety by real people's experience. And I always try to bring content, realistic content, like you are a real influencer for our society. So that's why, you know, I, I personally decided let's do this talk show with you because you deserve your, your content, your experience, your knowledge. Really, we all deserve to learn from you. Because this is the whole process of our life when we learn from influencers, when we le learn from real people, real life experiences. So, you know, uh, to ask to my uh, this talk, talk show, would like to ask one question here. What is the secret be behind of your passion and uh, your passion and your desire in your life? Um, I think a thing for me is. Uh, I, I, I include things in my life that bring myself joy, that bring me joy. And I look forward to things that I need to do the next day. And if I, if I don't look forward to it, <laughs> then I try to, like, I, I do a series of practices where I then try to around the idea of what that can bring me. So like I'll, I'll visualize a feeling or I'll visualize like if, this is not particularly fun at the moment, but then um, later what this can bring me is it can open these types of doors for me. So then I try to look at the bigger picture. So um, having the bigger picture in mind, but being flexible in the approach um, and just, I don't know, taking care of me. Um, I like, I love being able to, to see other people reach their goals and their dreams. And I love being able to, teach them the skills and teach them the independence to do so. Um, because that at the end of the day is, is what it's all about for me. I just want everybody to you know, to be the best version of themselves that they can be. And if there's any type of challenge or barrier that's holding them back, that can be addressed through either skill learning or adaptation, internal, sorry, internal or like environmental adaptation, then why not take the chance and, and, and change it? You are the author of your own life and it's, it's time that everybody has the pencil in their hands to be able to write it the way they want to write it. Wonderful. And I can see uh, basically real words from your uh, followers and viewers in my comment list. People are talking about you. You are a wonderful teacher. So that's really good. glad to see this kind of comment for you because uh, this is actually real what we, f we felt as well for your quality, for your experience, for your skill as well, Zendri. That's why our association is more stronger. So Zendri, you know, uh, every, every day uh, people talking about uh, depression, people talking about anxiety. But as per you would like to understand, because you are an occupational therapist and, a, and, a, and as a professional, what is your thought and what is your view on depression? So as per you, what is the depression? I think depression is a, is a big word used to lay a light on that there's something missing in your life. Um, you don't feel a Yeah, there's something missing. And if that something is missing for a very long time and in a, in a very big piece, then kind of feel like depression then it's the big word that everybody throws around um yeah so i i think depression is it comes very slightly and it comes in a, a small at first but if you feed it and if something happens like a dramatic event um and that just like pushes you over the threshold a little bit then yeah it's definitely going to lead to depression 
But I think before, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I think before, like anxiety and depression are big words that everybody uses, and they use it to describe a feeling. So it's like I have an anxious feeling, and then if I have that anxious feeling a few times a day, or a few or a few weeks, a few days in the week, then it's being categorized as I have anxiety, and um, and the same goes for depression. And I feel we need, we as humans need to understand how our own minds and bodies work. And if we have more knowledge about our own minds and our bodies, then we have more capacity and more tools in our own toolbox to take control over our own minds and bodies. So I would like to start off to first of all explain how the mind works and how the brain um, deals with thoughts and feelings. And then we can take it a step up and look at it, how it's going to go when it happens on a frequent basis. So first of all, uh, your brain has three parts. And we'll call it the, the upstairs brain, the downstairs brain, and then your uh, basement. So then first what needs to happen is whenever something happens around you, especially um, like from your senses, it needs to go through your basal ganglia, which is your basement brain. The question, the big question, the basal, uh, yeah, the big question that the basal ganglia asks, the brainstem, sorry, that the brainstem asks mm -hmm. is if I'm safe. So mm -hmm. if the body perceives the human as not being safe for whatever reason that may be, it can be because of a past trauma that is triggered, or it can be because of something that doesn't support the nervous system and it doesn't make it feel calm but instead it makes it feel like more activated then um the brain is going to tell the human okay well or the brain is going to send signals to the next part of the brain which is the limbic system which needs to redirect all your motor neurons or your neurons are going to fire next so then the limbic system is the part where your feelings also get generated so first of all, the big question that the brain asks is, am I safe? If the brain doesn't feel safe, the next part of the brain is going to take all its power and redirect it down and to keep the human safe. So then your fight and flight and freeze response will get activated. And then when that happens, your pupils dilate, your, you get the heat flash that goes on around you, um, your, you, get, you start to get heart palpitations, your cortisol level rising. So it's mm -hmm. very much like a stress response or what it would feel like an anxiety attack or what it would feel like as you just play sport and you get a little bit of aggressive and you want to actually go for the ball. So like your pain tolerance and all those things just heighten because your, your arteries like needs to re re respond um, and then your body needs to work together with that. So first of all, it's am I safe? Then what happens as well when the human brain doesn't feel safe at the bottom, the prefrontal cortex, which is the upstairs brain at the top, switches down. Mm -hmm. So then the connection between the uh, brainstem and the prefrontal cortex is not there. So your prefrontal cortex is responsible for tapping into your higher executive functions, so your decision-making skills. Uh, decision making skills, logical thinking, uh, judgment, all those things. So that's why when you have a fight with someone that you love, that afterwards you can't necessarily remember what you say to that person because your prefrontal cortex, the connections in the prefrontal cortex shuts down because all the body was, was focusing on is keeping my human safe. And that is in one example of just fighting with someone that you love. Um, then if there's a feeling that's going along with whatever you felt, whether that be a past exposure um, as a child or even a current exposure, whenever there's a feeling being generated with it, the brain puts it in a, in a memory. So now if that happens frequently, let's say you, you frequently fight or you, uh, another example can I use? Um, Let's, let's use a child, for instance, that, that grows up in a house with parents fighting the whole time. If the first question that the child's brain is going to ask is if I'm safe, 
now there's like loud noises going on parents are slapping the door they are screaming at one another and he has this visual feedback of how people are just like going back and forth at one another high pitched voices screaming all those things so now he can also sense it so his brain would also the next step would be okay he also needs to fight so then the baby would start crying because the parents are fighting because he also doesn't feel safe if it happens continuously and there's a feeling going accompanied by it if it with it be sadness or angry or frustration or whatever the case may be uh, the brain puts it in a memory and then the prefrontal cortex again shuts down so then you that's why when you are really mad you can't really talk talk to someone they need to calm down first because the logical part of their brain is just not activated and um, and then if that hope happens so then the cortisol level rises inflammation in the body increases and then the body that's when you like if you are stressed at work for instance you'll have difficulty falling asleep at night because the body is still on edge trying to protect the human even though the human is not necessarily in a uh, unsafe environment you might be in his own home where it's very safe but because of all the things that happened during the day and he didn't necessarily have enough time to process what happened during the day it's still going on inside that human's mind and now if you do if overthinking comes in a thought comes from the from the prefrontal cortex again and if a feeling is accompanied by it then again the prefrontal cortex shuts down a little bit and then you're going to a stress mode again so then because of that all your physiology responds as a result so then you'll have like sleep difficulties insomnia um yeah just the low threshold low frustration level all those things so then it's kind of a downward spiral from there many people lose their appetite as a result now because you don't have proper food in your system your body can't rejuvenate and your body can't restore itself and you can't use that as energy so you're basically running on very high cortisol levels and, and fumes the whole time and if that happens every single day then that is becoming the habitual response for the body um because it's like repetition 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 so then those now be your people that are just like constantly negative around uh, around everything they will take one thing and then it's a downward spiral from everything is negative everybody hates me why am i here what's my purpose it's just just a downward spiral from there um yeah <laughs> i lost my train of thought now <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 really you know very great insights you are sharing here with me and complete audience also because this is something what we are not getting uh, you know from uh, other uh, sources as well and this is something what we were expecting from your side also because you you are sharing very very insightful knowledge and very very fruitful knowledge for people those uh, uh, i can say not have clarity about the depression about the anxiety and you know what is the symptoms and how brain works everything so yeah so you know people don't talk on that but it is our pleasure and it's really appreciate you are talking about on it so that you know uh, we can get more clarity on it we can get more uh, enhancement how you know people can help on the situation of depression or anxiety or stress so you know we, because what i also personally that's uh, feeling the same what you are talking about like per, uh, depression is not over the night uh, effect in your mind right right it's, it's all about always start first from your feeling your emotion then coming to uh, stress then coming into anxiety then coming into depression so there is a complete you know whole process it's not over the night depression so yeah as if somebody i personally feel is somebody will control that uh, uh, emotion and feeling on initial stage on value stage so that that person can also deal with stress level as well so depression is very very far from that obviously you know we are human and stress could be happen in daily routine life in everyone's life in my life also in your life also stress could be happen but yeah if we control it by our emotion our feelings or our small small events so i think it will be a great so you are sharing really very very amazing thought here thank you 
so mo- uh, moving to yeah yeah zendri i'm sorry i'm sorry what you're saying <laughs> i was just remembering what i was trying to say um so like yeah so then eventually it becomes a habitual process um and then that later forms up your reactions so then instead of really responding to someone you would just be reacting to them because of the habitual responses that are now part of you because of small everyday moments that happen and yeah you didn't necessarily get a handle on top of it you you gave into it and then now that comes over you so it's like you are being run by your stress response and you are not running your stress response absolutely absolutely wonderful so moving to my next question very interesting question and i'm sure you have a right answer on that and uh, i'm really sorry i'm going to ask so many questions because of you know the talk show and we are expecting so many good answers from your side and this is the opportunity for me and every user also to get more clarity more uh, amazing content from your side jandri so my next question to you how a small thought become a reason of overthinking how a small thought becomes a reason for overthinking of overthinking yeah a small thought yeah i i would guess it depends on the thought <laughs> if it is a thought <laughs> if it is a thought about a past event or a thought about a future situation or event coming up um and again if it has a emotion attached to it so if it's a thought about a past event that for instance maybe make you feel like you blame yourself for it um and then you think about that and then that feeling kind of like washes over you again again because of the feeling that you associate that experience with again you're going to shut shut down the prefrontal cortex the ability to make logical decisions and judgment and all those things the stress response is going to be activated and then that's just the vicious cycle the whole time so when you feed that monster the monster just gets bigger 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 and not only as a picture in your mind but really as a change in your whole physiology your whole body response as a result and then it's just much harder to to turn that around because if, especially if it's already a habitual process um and also the same with future events if you are thinking about the future and it gives you this feeling of anxiety that you're feeling um and you keep on thinking about it the whole time then the same thing is going to happen again um so the biggest thing would be is to influence the vagus nerve which runs directly through your diaphragm um and, and so the first thing that the brain stem needs to do that I didn't mention previously is it controls your autonomic responses such as your breathing and your heart rate and all those things and that is why that first and then it is the brain stem that needs to like influence all those things so that's why when you are stressed your breathing gets shallower your heart rate gets uh, faster uh, like more heat comes through your body that type of thing so that's the first area of response um so how you can for instance pick that up when you are in a pattern of overthinking whether it be past experiences or future events then um you can influence your vagus nerve by breathing because it runs through your diaphragm and if you do like proper belly breathing you influence your first area of contact which is your breath and then because the breath gets more controlled the heart rate slows down the arteries pass a dilate again and your body doesn't feel and then you don't activate that stress response as much and um, and it really just starts with a thought so it's just the thought around that is also like no no amount of guilt is going to change past experiences and no amount of anxiety is going to change the future experiences and you just living in the past or you just living in the future is really just robbing you from really being happy in the present and then at the end of the day you being anxious about being anxious is just making you anxious and then that's all you're going to be because it's going to again create that habit that habitual state of 
this is where I am at and this is how I wake up in the day and this is how I go to bed. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. I think it's a very, very uh, uh, good explanation on this question because uh, uh, this is something, you know, uh, very technical, but yes, as a layman, I can say uh, it's very helpful as well because you are absolutely right. Thank you so much, everyone who all are commenting. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And if uh, anyone would like to ask question during our talk show, that person can definitely write here and uh, we are here to respond on the same. So, uh, you know, Zendri, fear is a part of our values because fear is a value, right? And every human has fear. I'm very sure you have also fear uh, from something. So uh, may I ask, <laughs> you have fear. So what kind of fear you have from, from which place or height? What is your fear actually? Um, to be honest, I don't really have like a big, this is my fear. I, I do get fearful in moments of usually discomfort when I'm pushed outside of my comfort zone or I realize that this perhaps wasn't the, the best decision. I'll give an example about two weeks ago, we went on a, on a trip with friends. I went down sooner. Um, and then I decided, okay, I'm going to explore the area by myself. So I rent a motorbike, um, and then I took the road non taken. So it's like the Ho Chi Minh Highway um, in Vietnam going. So I like started at one point and then drove all the way up, up. But I was by myself. But I didn't. I wasn't really sure what I let myself in for because I've never driven it before. But I've spoken to somebody that has, but they failed to let me know that it's quite dangerous in the sense that there's no real road actually um, and it might be safer to go with two people. So then I just decided that I'll go by myself in any case. Um, but yeah, so then as I was going up the mountain, um, in the beginning it was very, very happy. Like, oh, this is beautiful. I can't believe this is so nice. There's waterfalls, stopping next to the road to have lunch with water buffaloes crossing the river, all just wonderful. Then when I got up a little bit high onto the mountain, it started to become like really, really cloudy and really misty. So I couldn't see as much as like 10 meters in front of me. And I was alone. And I didn't have signal on my phone. And I'm like, okay, this was probably not the best idea. (laughs) Um, But then in those moments, I really needed to. So then I was fearful because I'm like, if something happens now, nobody's going to know. I can't reach out to someone. I barely see people passing me. Even the workers that work next to the road, when I pass them, they toot to me and they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I'm changing time. I want to get to the base before the sun actually sets because if I'm on this road and the sun sets, I'm, I'm lost because there's no street lights, there's no nothing. So now I'm chasing time with this whole yeah, crazy oh event. Um, so crazy. <laughs> It was. <laughs> um, but then in those moments, I really needed to like check in with myself. Um, mm-hmm. So because of this, and I know the stress responses and things, I'm like, okay, I can't go into that area of me just getting crazy of all these things. I need to try and stay cool. Uh, so then mm-hmm. also just I like, try to remember to keep like doing my own breathing as I was going, just to like influence my vagus nerve the whole time and just to yeah, just because now I can't be like on edge and then miss a thing because I can't see and then I'll just like tumble down the mountain. And so I needed to be really conscious of my own thoughts. I did like a lot of self-talk um, <laughs> and then a lot of just conscious trying to think about my brain. And then I found my, I kept myself like a million times, like really leaning into the back and like my shoulders and everything would just tense up. And then my palms would get really sweaty and I'm like, okay, Sandra, you're not breathing. And then, okay, again, it's okay, it's fine, you gotta make it, just breathe, just breathe. <laughs> I even started singing to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I singing to myself on the way up, I'm like, I need to make this fun in a way because otherwise I'm like, if I go around the room like this, <laughs> so I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, I definitely don't do for the fact like it's a, it's a normal thing for a human to feel and it's, might come in different shapes and forms and different severities. Um, But it's, yeah, it's just trying to, 
I don't know, in that moment, take control over your stress response. Um, yeah, just to try and stay level-headed. But I'm sure it was a very, uh, one of the full of adventurous trip for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I took lots of pictures. I have lots of stories to tell. I did a journal entry after that and it was the longest one yet. <laughs> I'm like, these are the thoughts I thought. These were the feelings. This is what I won't do again. This is what I would, what I learned from it. So it was, yeah, it was, it was a lovely experience. It's a story to tell at the end of the day. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. That is something, you know, uh, always, uh, always a memory for us. And uh, it's, it's become a memory and it become a, a lovely time also. These kind of adventures. <laughs> so, Zedri, uh, as per you, what is the relation between fear and depression? I'm going to tie it back again to how the brain works. So, if, if you have a thought and the thought is making you fearful, then the body is going to respond. And then the body is going to create that stress response. You're going to have increased cortisol. Uh, your whole physiology is going to respond in terms of you're going to have a high inflammation state inside the body the whole time. So it's like getting an injury and your body needs to heal. You get inflammation and swelling first um, because then all the white blood cells need to go to the area in order to heal that part that got injured. Now, if your part that's injured is your brain and your thoughts, then the whole body is going to respond as a result of that. So then your whole body is an in inflammation the whole time. And if um, you know, when you are in inflammation, again, you have difficulty tapping into the other areas of the brain that need to bring you joy and your creative side that makes you vibrate closer to the real you that you really are, that like enhances that dopamine effect and bring, fills your cup with joy and like overflows and love and all those things. So um, if, and then if that, again, consists on a frequent basis, every single day you say those thoughts to yourself or you, you um, give into that fear the whole time, then the body is going to be in that inflammatory state the whole time, fight and flight and freeze. And because you don't um, have access to your joy juice, then eventually on the long run it is going to become depression because that's the hole that you are in and that's the hole that you are digging. Yeah, because because uh, uh, I think fear is as as we have already discussed. You know, uh, most of the time that uh, we have uh, a fearness for anything like a fear. So fear is a part of our value. But sometimes you know, over fear is uh, somewhere very uh, harmful, right? And over fear obviously happened by over thought process, over thinking. Uh, mm -hmm. Seventy to eighty percent in seventy to eighty percent cases, this happened. Right. And as a layman, if somebody is coming to the depression, so definitely that person is coming out from overthought process and over fear space as well. Yeah. So uh, but what I feel personally uh, over fear should not be happen. The thing is that if we are into over fear, so definitely we will come into depression. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, I would like to challenge people instead of over fearing rather like acknowledge the fear for being there that's very important to do because we are human and you are fearful of that situation for a reason um maybe like doing retrospect in terms of what about this digging a little bit deeper in terms of what about this is creating this response inside of me is it the fact that i'm out of my comfort zone is it the fact that um, yeah, just like something about a past trauma that maybe happened. Um, and then instead of feeding that dog, uh, trying to look for ways that you can gain skills and that you can like brush off the tools in your own toolbox to rather deal with it in a constructive way instead of just like playing with the thought the whole time in your mind because then that's where it's going to stay. It's just going to stay here and you're really not going to move forward with it because it's just... It becomes yeah you <laughs> <laughs> absolutely and I I am completely uh, you know agreed on this uh, that the the thing is that because we we always talk about you know fear insecurity and you know there are eighty nine values in 
in our mind there are 89 values in our emotion and feeling and they definitely are emotion and feeling uh, driven by these 89 values but the thing is that we should identify right value on right time and as per the right situation so when when we are into present definitely we can tap right value on right time or right uh, situation but being a occupational therapist because you have a very big responsibility and uh, amazing transformational coach henry so being a occupational therapist how you how you deal with your self fear self over fear when when you are into your self over fear not only fear over fear so being a occupational therapist how you deal with it would love to hear that for myself i try to um, i i try to look at the positive of everything so i'm like i acknowledge i'm not biased in a way that everything is good and everything is positive and everything is good in the world it definitely is not um like i do acknowledge the negative in me but i try not to hang around too much of it um whether it be my peers or whether it be the people that i surround myself with or whether it be my own thoughts um i acknowledge it for what it is like this is for me it's it's mainly like i do a lot of interest introspection in terms of when something happens then i ask myself like a lot of series of questions or i journal about it or i sit and think about it a little bit more um and also taking past traumas into account for me i'm like okay this makes sense why and sometimes past trauma doesn't come up as a as a memory it's not like a flashback or a, a dream that you're going to have sometimes it just comes up as a reaction um so somebody like pushing your button for instance that would be yeah it's it's something that you haven't dealt with yet and it's something that you haven't got in control over yet it's still creating this feeling inside of you so for me it is a lot about like trying to see where it stems from um mm -hmm. and some of my things are past from so I'm like okay mm -hmm. so since i have the need to have everything under my control um because mm -hmm. yeah in in my past there was moments where i didn't feel i had every or i i wasn't in control and i overcompensated for it by having everything in control so i'm like very organized and i'm very scheduled and i'm very i have lists for everything and i have i track everything so it's that is something for me um but yours might look completely different whatever that thing that services for you but that is what we call well i call it a stickler so uh, that would be like my judgy my judgy part of me um mm. so me it's just trying to catch when that part comes up and then mm. i like say it as it is i'm like okay well here the judge goes again or you can give it a name uh, well here betty goes again or whatever and then as when you acknowledge it for what it is you take the power away from it so it's like it's it's not it's not me zandi it's my past traumas or my past experiences that's now coming up as a reaction and then for me to yeah then i call it out and i'm like okay well here she goes again and then i know i have the tools in my toolbox to and also the self compassion to say okay i'm not going to allow her to run my day so you ran this few seconds but this is where it's going to stop um and for me yeah i would say just like spending time alone uh trying to figure out why it, why these things come up because again if and then to actively rewire my brain around it so if i had a feeling attached to it to rewire my feeling if my feeling was feeling guilty then i could instead view it as okay what did i get out of that situation uh what can make me feel good about that situation instead of making me feel guilty about it so uh i learned this or i gained a new friend through through this or it took me on this life journey and it brought me back home or it brought like to identify things around it more positive things than negative things um and then to try and cultivate that and even for future things um uh, I try not to think about it too much to be honest. <laughs> I'm like okay, I do think about it. I definitely do and sometimes it's not my day. Um but for most of the time most of my affirmations in the morning is just like I want to be present. I just want to be here today. And 
know that everything will work out for a reason. Um, and Absolutely. Like I'm, I'm on schedule and I live on purpose and I'm exactly where I need to be. And whatever is meant to me will come to me and whatever is not will go. Um, but yeah, in, if I'm going to live in the future, then I'm always just going to live in the future. I'm not going to live in the present. And then again, living in the future the whole time and what I explained about your whole physiology, it's just going to, yeah, it's going to make the future daunting because you're going to have anxiety around it or you're going to have a depression about past things or even future things that you are not yet reaching or you are not yet doing. But because you have all those things, the thinking, but not necessarily doing anything about it, that is exactly what is going to happen because you are not in the state to actually put what your what what you want your goals and your dreams in action by living in the present and that is where the action happens is in the present absolutely and that is the real spirit i can say being a coach in you 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 know uh, uh you, if if you know how you can deal with your emotion your feelings your fear your every value each and every value is important for you and you as a coach if you know how you can deal with it i'm sure your quality and productive coaching is outstanding for everyone no <laughs> because this is something what people are looking and this is something what you are showing this is something what society want now mm. so so zendri this is a really very you know very uh, amazing and excited uh, talk show going on and uh, i i i wish because uh, obviously because of you know uh, time limitations also i will i will keep it very short but yes before uh, going to my closer i would like to ask uh, uh, two more questions from you one is uh, because you know covid covid situation is very very difficult all over the world right and people are into stress uh, and in depression as well and in so many overthought process related with financial personal relationship challenges because being a coach i am also uh, having this kind of sessions uh, you know uh, i'm getting this kind of sessions and this kind of things uh, from society uh, so one message would you like to give to our viewers one small crepes and amazing message if you would like to share with our viewers today on this situation one <laughs> positive message i think i'm going to repeat myself of what i said earlier no amount of guilt can change the past and no amount of anxiety can change the future and the only way you can change all of it is to be in the present and that honestly just starts with your breath try to notice your own body reactions in situations that's going to give you more information about what you're dealing with um and it's going to allow you to look a little bit deeper in terms of is it a past trauma is it just a reaction or is just or is it really me feeling this way and if you are feeling that way in that right moment then absolutely feel that way and do something about it then but yeah you are the author of your own story and the pen is in your hand and you get to choose how you want to write it absolutely so you are absolutely right we uh, so uh, we should live in present definitely we should not bother about the future we should not bother about the past definitely whatever we are performing that will create a better future so if we want a better future we will have to perform in present because pre present is a main player for our future and if we are talking about past definitely past happen past so if we'll think about past definitely we'll lose our present as well so your answer is really really insightful uh, zendri and i really appreciate for that my last what question I, uh, sorry what you are saying zendri uh, what i would also like to add is like yeah you know, sure the Even that might pop into people's head is like, how do I then really live in the present? I am in the present now, aren't I? It's like yes, but then, like tuning to your senses. Uh, when you slow down, literally just slow down. If you if you walk, walk a little bit slower. Um, try to do everything just a little bit slower, and really just be mindful of what's happening around you. Um, if you are drinking a a cup of coffee and you're taking a sip. 
really feel how <laughs> in your mouth how the heat goes through your um <laughs> that was the neck <laughs> it goes like i, I <laughs> think today i think today your throat is also not uh, well a bit is it no it's not <laughs> this morning yeah. didn't yeah the seasons are changing now yeah and the air hasn't been quite good in vietnam so mm. i think developing a little but but i really um, appreciate you know in this condition also you are uh, giving a great uh, talk show here to our viewers is really really very appreciate to your dedication and determination <laughs> yeah thank you arjun um yeah so what i was saying is um yeah just to yeah tap into your senses if you touch something really feel how it how it feels like when you walk on something pick up your shoes walk barefoot and really feel how everything feels underneath your feet that's really the only way you can ground yourself in the present moment is just to be mindful of the elements around you um the wind on your skin the sun on your skin uh yeah at the end of the day we are one with nature and nature is one with us uh, the wind is your breath the earth is your bones uh right. the fire is your digestion and your thoughts and like all these things going on around you so really spend time in nature nature communicates to you nature grounds you more than you can ever ever realize um and apart from that just do things that make you happy even if it doesn't make others happy it doesn't matter uh carf time out of your day every single day to spend some time alone with yourself and whether that be drawing or coloring in or painting or gardening or cooking or whatever it is that lights your fire try to make time for that every single day because if the fire is not going to keep on growing and growing and growing and your wood is just going to get less and less and less and then eventually your fire is going to burn out so then you yeah you trying to be everything for everyone um or you trying to pitch up in certain situations um to especially take care of others you won't be able to take care of others if you don't take care of yourself first because then if you don't take care of yourself and you have this threshold and you have this mild inflammation going on in your body the whole time um you're just going to feel frustrated and then again your response is just going to become reactions and then we start the whole vicious cycle again so and the thing is yeah the, the closer you vibrate to your the real you and what makes you happy and what lights your fire that is what the world needs more of and that is what you are here for is being you because what yeah you have what the world needs that you would need to be and embrace the you for it yeah so self care absolutely <laughs> in one way <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yes and it's a very good, good message <laughs> now so mm-hmm. i i i i really uh, appreciate your you know all uh, insightful knowledge what you are sharing here and i request to all my viewers whoever would like to ask uh, any question definitely we are here to respond to you and today uh, in our the talk show uh, zendri is here so she uh, she is going to share she already you know uh, shared so many amazing insightful information and if somebody would like to ask more questions so that person can Uh, comment here and we are happy to reply on that so before to close up my last question zendri from you what is your thought and what is your experience or anything if you would like to share uh, for the association yours with life zone <laughs> i'm very excited for our journey and our partnership um and i i feel the work that you are doing is amazing um you are you are you are changing lives um and yeah i really value that and i really what what you stand for and um all the values that life honor life's honor try to honor <laughs> um yeah and yeah i'm excited to just to you uh, for your own journey as well i'm going to be next to you as your own, as your chair leader and also as your partner <laughs> um yeah and i'm looking forward to it I'm looking forward to new heights definitely thank you so much zendri for your uh, really uh, valuable word for uh, for us and uh, we are we are uh, we are 
coaching company not because of only me because of we and you are valuable part of our organization lives on a you are valuable occupational therapist transformational coach for us that's why you know we are we not me and we i personally believe in we because we is a word that can change complete world and this word will change by we not me so i i really appreciate the effort by you what you are contributing and how beautifully you are working you are helping us you are helping a uh, people and uh, definitely going forward and even in future also uh, we we all together will transform this world will create a positive world so that people can live in positive world with positive thought with positive direction with positive mindset and this is the whole purpose of our v absolutely i agree <laughs> yeah that's great so uh zenzi uh, uh really i would like to say a special thanks to you for your availability and special for your information because i am very sure this information is not on only instagram users even on rest of social media platform people will be helpful and uh, we are going to post it everywhere it will be very very helpful and apart from that if any user any follower would like to reach out to us for the special session of occupational therapy and uh, transformation therapy from zenry as well that person can reach out to us we will comment our uh, link so that you can directly connect and uh, you can reach out for occupational one to one therapy session as well so we we are uh, very sure me and jendri uh, you know uh, you guys are love this session and uh, it will be helpful for you and one to one if you would like to know more definitely lives on our doors always open for everyone and jendri is always with us <laughs> so yeah so jendri would you like to share something before closing for our viewers I don't know. I've shared so much. <laughs> you shared so much. Yes, I know. I know you. You shared so many insightful. <laughs> well, um, yeah. I just, yeah. I just want everybody to remember that, yeah. They, we all have a place in this life, and we are all here for a reason. And um, yeah, sometimes it can really get daunting. if you 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 haven't found your spark yet um and i think yeah just practicing self compassion is key um try not to be too hard on yourself you are exactly where you need to be and you are exactly where you where you are meant to be and you are influencing people around you that needs what you have to offer or that that wants yeah that needs that needs what you have to offer um yeah i just think trust the journey that's great that's lovely message and and really thank you so much sandri and uh, we wish will will do uh, again another our live session very soon and for time being uh, just take care for your throat as well and mm-hmm. have some warm water also warm coffee as well <laughs> <laughs> that's that's cool that's cool <laughs> thank you so much sandri and thank you everyone who all joined here Thank you and have a lovely evening to all of you. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you for the opportunity, Arjun. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>